My name is Fuyuhi Himino. I've been waiting for her to tell me if, if she could help me find someone. I still haven't got a reply from her. You're looking for someone? She might have gone to the mountain. Mount Hikami. Mount Hikami? Someone told me that they saw my friend there. It's an infamous suicide spot, isn't it? That's right, Fuyuhi. And pack your flashlights and crucifixes, cause today we're going to explore the suicide forest. One of my favourite things in gaming is real world symbology and allegory, and how the developers experiences in this world shape the game world. I think it's chilling that the wedding in Majora's Mask was based on a wedding that game developers went to on the day that North Korea were planning to launch missiles threatening to end everything from above, just like the moon. I think it's heartbreaking that Ness's dad isn't seen in Earthbound because the game's creator Shigesato Itoi spent his own childhood never seeing his hard working father. He did see a few things that made for more sinister inspirations behind the game, but I digress. And I love that the original Pokemon world is based on the forests and fields where Satoshi Tajiri spent his childhood collecting insects. Sometimes inspiration comes from darker places, and that's the case with Project Zero, Maiden of Blackwater for the Wii U, an installment of the Fatal Frame series. The game's setting, Mount Hikami, is based on Aokigahara Forest in Japan an unassuming place at the base of Mount Fuji, but in fact it holds a very dark, bloody history. Over the past few decades, hundreds of people have committed suicide in Aokigahara. Exact numbers and statistics are hard to find, as the Japanese government don't exactly want to publicise it, but it's thought there could be corpses hidden in the evergreen forest at any given time. Understandably, it's come to be seen as a gateway between the worlds of the living and the dead, and the game's Mount Hikami follows this idea, having you fend off countless suicide and homicide victims using your camera obscura. Maiden of Blackwater tells the story of a bunch of people, well mainly underdressed girls, who repeatedly go into the haunted forest in the middle of the night to look for other people who repeatedly wander into the haunted forest in the middle of the night. It's a pretty tedious game, it's fun at first and there are plenty of scares, which is what you want from a horror game obviously, but it suffers from slow pacing, repetition and dodgy controls. I wouldn't recommend paying for a download as it's not quite worth the price tag, not for me anyway. The limited edition physical copies go for high prices, but at least you can sell it on after you've finished playing the game. There's also a free demo on the eShop if you want to dip your toe into the black water. Anyway, regardless of how the game handles, it's fascinating to see just how many similarities the game shares with the myths, legends and realities of Japan's suicide forest. I highly recommend watching the short Vice documentary in which geologist Asuza Hayano explores the forest and sees discarded dolls, abandoned tents, abandoned cars and misplaced maps, all of which come into play in Maiden of Blackwater as key items and landmarks. It's unclear why Aoki Gahara became a suicide hotspot, but it's believed that the 1960 novel Kuroi Yukai, meaning Sea of Black Trees, romanticised the idea, as it tells the story of two lovers who make a suicide pact there. More significantly, there's Wataru Surumi's controversial book Complete Manual of Suicide, which lists Aoki Gahara as a perfect place to die. Words very similar to this appear in suicide notes littered throughout the game. Aside from Maiden of Blackwater, there have been a bunch of games and movies that draw inspiration from Aoki Gahara, most recently The Forest starring Natalie Dormer. There was also one starring Matthew McConaughey, but I haven't seen it. Although maybe that's for the best. Look at these reviews. Sounds fucking terrible. Many people possibly choose to end their lives in Aoki Gahara as a continuation of seppuku, an act of suicide that was used by the samurai in Japan to dispel shame and dishonour. Japan's Shinto religion teaches that a deceased person can also return to nature, again suggesting peacefulness at the time of death in the forest. There are also the game's eponymous shrine maidens, who are sacrificed to keep water flowing throughout the mountain. There's a much darker side to the shrine maidens, however. They share a lot in common with barbaric practices from Japan's past. Ubasuti was the act of leaving an elderly or infirm relative to die in the wilderness, something believed to have happened in Aokigahara. 
There's also the act of Hitobashira. Legend has it that this involved burying people alive in order to sustain the surrounding area. It's said that castles and constructions still standing in Japan today have human remains in their foundations, including Maruoka Castle and Matsu Castle. It seems the sacrificed maidens, known in the game as Pillars, which is what Hitobashira translates to in English, were based on these morbid legends. The Shrine of Dolls is surely one of the game's creepiest areas, with countless dolls hanging from the trees. Interestingly, no, no, unfortunately, it shares a resemblance with another real-life area, but this time one far from Japan in Mexico City. On a little island south of the city, hundreds of ragged baby dolls are suspended around the trees and landmarks. Legend has it that the caretaker Julian Santana Barrera saw a little girl drowning one day, but couldn't save her in time. He later found a doll washed up on the shore and, in her memory, decided to turn the island into a kingdom of fucking nightmare fuel. He continued scaring the shit out of tourists for 50 years before drowning in the same place he'd seen the little girl. The dolls still watch the island to this day. I'm sure you'll all join me in saying, nope. Games might seem to be based on fantasy, horror and surrealism, but look into the inspirations behind the next game you play. You might just be surprised at how often real life is stranger and scarier than video game fiction. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to read more on Maiden of Blackwater and Aoki Gahara, check out the article I wrote for Playboy. There's a link in the video description. Also don't forget to check out some of my other videos, and if you enjoy them, please like and subscribe for more of the same soon. Cheerio!